What makes a good MSP and what makes a bad MSP? And what are the key characteristics that differentiate one from the other? My name is Harrison Barron from growth-generators.com. We help MSPs with sales training and marketing. Before I get into it, I do want to mention one quick thing. As always, there is a bunch of super helpful resources down below from masterclasses to the discord link to swipe files that you can go and grab. I would highly, highly recommend going and checking that section out. So let's talk about what is an MSP, right? We obviously we know what an MSP is. An MSP is a managed service provider. And you guys have probably heard me mention a managed solutions provider. Well, we're going to be diving deep down. Now, if you're an MSP, you probably want to watch this video. And if you're thinking about getting an MSP or hiring an MSP, this is going to be a great video for you as well to see the real key differences. So let's talk about the good, right? We always want to see what the good is, what really stands out when it comes to an MSP. Number one, and probably the most important thing, what you're truly paying for, what a customer is truly paying for, is proactive support, really being proactive. Now, it's a little harder for customers or potential customers to really see this, but being proactive in your support is vital. It's going to help you reduce the risk for clients. It's going to help you show above and beyond care. Ultimately, everything comes down to that. And I always bring, or I like to bring out these white gloves because proactive support is a bit of a white glove service. It should be something that is truly amazing and truly incredible for that customer experience. And that's something that most MSPs really should be striving for. The second part of that is effectively communicating. Look, I'd be crazy to say nothing is going to go wrong. Of course, things are going to go wrong. It doesn't matter how much you plan. SpaceX has billions of dollars and things go wrong. But the key is, is effective communication between the MSP and the client. And if that communication is good and clear, things are going to run so smoothly. There's a ton of ways to communicate nowadays. You have email, you have texting, you have phone calls. I mean, maybe smoke signals at this point. There is so much opportunity to be an effective communicator. Customers understand things aren't going to always be fixed immediately, but they don't want to sit there in limbo of what's going on? I hope things are going good. No, they don't want that. They want to have clear and effective communication. It doesn't have to be all the time, but the more severe the problem, the more often they should be communicated with. Even if it's just a holding pattern or waiting for things to happen, that's okay too. But effectively communicating that is super important. Advanced technology and tools. Now, this is a kind of a broad statement, but let me explain. Good MSPs are using top tier tools. There are a ton of them. Personally, I'm a big fan of SuperOps. There's a Terra. You have ConnectWise, Synchro, Halo. The list goes on and on and on. There are so many fantastic tools for MSPs, but not just those tools. There are other tools. Your antivirus, you have ESET, you have it's just the list goes on and on and on. You know what is great for you and your clients. If an MSP is trying to push or using open source or software that constantly seems like it's breaking, could be a huge red flag for you to say, I don't really know. They should be using high quality tools, industry gold standards across the board. Of course, they're going to experiment and play with new stuff. That's part of being in tech. But for the most part, they should have a lockdown set of tools that they could refer to over and over and over again. Now, I talked in the beginning, a managed service provider or a managed solution provider. A good MSP is providing custom solutions. Now, I always recommend MSPs to niche down, at least when they're first starting out so they can get their core group of clients. This is super important because you can figure out the solution that works best for that industry and repeat it over and over and over and over again. It is super important. It becomes your secret sauce that you could take out and say, hey, this is our secret sauce. We've worked with tons of other people in the industry. This is what works best. And last but not least, they have to have some kind of strong security measures. It doesn't have to be overkill. They don't have to be pen testing the network or anything like that, but they should have some kind of antivirus in place. I'm a big fan of ESET, but there's plenty others out there. You have to have other security measures in place and some basic training for employees. 
phishing or anti-phishing protocols built in and education for passwords and all that good stuff as well. It is vital. And that is what I would consider makes a fantastic MSP. Now, if you've made it this far, I do want to ask two things. One, hit that like and subscribe button. Two, if you think I missed something about what makes an MSP amazing, leave it down below. Now you've hit the like button and hopefully that subscribe button. Let's get onto the signs of a bad MSP. It is the first and foremost thing. We talked about proactive. Well, what's the opposite of that? A reactive approach. They are sitting there, hands in their pockets, waiting around for things to happen. That is a red flag right off the bat. They should be proactive. Of course, they're not gonna catch everything. But waiting and being reactive or knowing that you could have prevented something is a huge red flag for MSPs. A bad or poor MSP, or it's just a, not a great one, they are going to be super reactive. They're going to sit there. You might catch them off guard, things of that nature. They should be on top of it. You are paying a premium or customers are paying a premium to have an amazing service. Following that, on top of being reactive, they are not good at communicating. They either have a bad system, they have outdated technology, they are not keeping the customer up to date on what's going on. That could be from upgrades to problems that they're having to the reactiveness of situations and saying, yeah, we're taking care of it. And this thing, no text, no phone call, no email, and you're sitting there in limbo. Once again, just twiddling your thumbs. And last but not least, or almost last but not least, is a one-size-fits-all solution. You are a managed service provider, or in many cases, a managed solutions provider. Why not provide incredible solutions instead of trying to cram everybody into a one-size-fits-all stack? Now, for MSPs that are watching, yes, you're going to have your normal tier list, but over time, you are going to you're going to create magic and you're going to figure out where there's opportunities in different industries that you could say, hey, I have a perfect solution for this. Let's crank that out and get it going. That's really where it shines. And last but not least, inadequate security. And this kind of goes without saying there's no phishing. There's there's no phishing training. There's no education. There's nothing. There's just it's just bad across the board. They might not have even deployed a basic level of antivirus. Who knows? But that is huge. A there's no patch management. Nothing. It's just a wasteland of hope. And that, in my opinion, was what makes a bad MSP. Now, if you've made it this far, let's talk about how to actually choose the right MSPs. Now, if you're an MSP, you're going to want to watch this. And if you're somebody hiring an MSP, you're probably going to want to watch this too, All right? How to actually go choose this because we've talked about the good. Now we've talked about the bad, right? You have to first assess your needs as a business and MSPs going out, you have to assess the needs of a customer. It's called a needs assessment fully understanding what is going on, not only with their environment, right? The computers, the switches, the network, all of that, but really where is their deficiencies in their business? What do they really need help with? What are they constantly struggling with? Is it a printer that is constantly giving headaches or is it other stuff that's just a nightmare for them to deal with? Or maybe they just they're running their business off Excel sheets and you can come in as the knight in shining armor and say, hey, by the way, you guys are getting new customers and you guys are using your entire or running your entire business off Excel sheets. This crazy bald dude on the Internet says that you need a CRM, a customer relationship manager. Things like that are super important. And then you begin to fill that managed solutions provider role. Next is gonna be doing your own research and referrals. Yes, their website is a fantastic place to go find information about that MSP. MSPs, I hope you filled out your website. After that, what's next? Ask for referrals, ask other friends, see how they're doing, ask for a customer list or maybe a few customers that they can go in and sit down and buy the person coffee and say, hey, I'd love to talk to you about this MSP and MSPs, be ready for that. This is the whole point of being prepared and being ready for this kind of stuff. Next is going to be evaluating credentials. Now, I talk a lot about licensing not being that important, and it's true for certain cases. But as you grow as an MSP, you're going to want to have some certs. 
What those certs are, are going to vary based on the niche that you're serving and the level in which you serve customers. You know what certs you're gonna need and customers will hopefully do the homework to figure out what certs you should have. When you're first starting out, nobody really asks for them and nobody might ask for them for a while, but having them does help. And last but not least, if you're a customer hiring an MSP, ask good questions. Now, an MSP is going to respond in a technical way, usually for the most part, and that's good. You don't want to go too technical. You want to take it and explain it in layman's terms, in a way that a customer can understand and fully absorb the information that you are providing. That is also a clear indicator that if an MSP can break down super complicated technology, whether that's Microsoft Azure, switches, networking, firewalls, whatever it might be, and can explain that in common terms to somebody who doesn't fully understand that, that is gold. And it's usually a telltale sign of a great MSP, or at least the bare minimum, a great MSP salesperson. Somebody that could really break it down and allow you to fully understand what is going on. So if you've made it this far, I hope you hit that like button, that subscribe button, notification bell, go down below, find all the goodies. And I hope you guys are enjoying the new setup. We've migrated a little bit. We moved some stuff over, but I'm pretty excited. I've re changed. I've, I've reorganized my office. I have some incredible content coming in the near future. Other than that, love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video until then.